So I'm one of those funny fellas on social media that, that believe that results kind of speak for themselves. Right. So I'm, I'm not coming on to social media to, to sell you on anything. I'm not. The very reality is when I do these portfolio reviews, and this is my account, this is the self-directed Roth IRA account number two. I'm going to roll this out to you guys for full transparency. This account was started with $1,500 um, about 16 years ago, anyway, with uh, proceeds from a Mustang that I sold for $3,000. I split the proceeds and half of it went into the account that I'm declaring to you now. So pretty cool stuff. It's uh, evolved uh, over the years. Um, I haven't self-directed this the entire time. This has been a product of, of churn, um, taking some profits, being long, being an investor, being passive, doing everything I can possibly do to pay attention. And that's really the key. Um, but the, but the real key to my success is, is a, a desire to do that. That's really it. And when it comes down to your choice of becoming an investor, you really need to ask yourself, do I want to do, or do I not want to do? And you need to identify what things you need to do to really start to align some of the disciplines that I share openly uh, on social media. Um, I don't spend like an idiot. I don't film myself driving around in a Ferrari. I don't think that does anybody any good um, because in the trenches, people are left after a message confused as to how to apply. And that's the key is if we can't empower one investor at a time on my channel, um, then the message will cease to exist. It's just that simple. But there's nothing that special about what I do. Anybody can do it. And this is just proof and validation as to how uh, anybody can do that. Guys, we'll jump in and we'll conduct the review now. Please enjoy. All right, guys, I'd like to welcome everybody into the uh, independent investor uh, self-directed Roth IRA account uh, number two. This is my account. This is the account that I've chronicled throughout the uh, history of the um, independent investor channel uh, for the last few years. Uh, it's grown sizably. It's evolved. It's taken on uh, new life <laughs> in certain areas. I try to deploy uh, multiple strategies again in this Roth with the care it's necessary to understand that dollars gained in this account are tax protected and wealth preserved over time. But on the flip side, dollars lost are dollars that have to be generated back by either new contributions or um, new holdings within the portfolio. So it, it's a little tricky. Um, I look at Roth dollars as somewhat sacred dollars, for a lack of better terms. So I'm, I'm very care, careful before I deploy new strategies. Um, I abide by very simple rules. I, I try to invest in the very best companies that would uh, be eligible to go into a Roth IRA. Perfect example of that is my holding in Johnson & Johnson. It's my favorite healthcare stock. I do have a lot of favorites uh, in healthcare. Uh, Merck is the supplementary to J&J, &J, and then I own multiple other names like United Healthcare. Uh, Abbott Laboratories and Thermo Fisher Scientific and the other smaller account, that of which can be dollar cost uh, uh, or uh, dividend reinvested and dollar cost averaged over time because they're smaller amounts. And these larger positions have the opportunity to dividend reinvest within the Roth IRA and they really are the best out of the sector. That's what I'm trying to aim for here is the very best of the best of the best. And, and, and what I can't account for in my evaluation of what the best of the best in any given sector is, I make up for that uh, in the passive aspect where I may catch areas of the market that I can't catch or account for or invest in directly uh, by investing passively. So I do opt for the uh, dividends uh, high yielder in this account. It just makes sense. Now, just a, a method to why I think this way is because I have the TSP. 
So that right there allows me to grab the S&P 500 exposure through the C fund, which isn't quite as good as VOO in my opinion, but it, but it does give me that exposure nonetheless. So looking at it from a holistic portfolio perspective, it makes sense for me to do what it is that I'm doing here in adding a little bit more strategic ETF in here with the high dividend yield domestically. Uh, and the VYMI, which is the High Dividend International. Just a strategic arm. Um, you know, could I do better with the S&P 500 just doubling up and overlapping? Probably, but that, that's not the goal here. The, the goal here is to seek out a diversified strategic arm to pay me some nice dividends because, again, I already have that exposure outside. So to round out the passive exposure in here, the VNQ with the real estate, kind of help supplement. I hold real estate exclusively in the Roths. It's a great sector. I enjoy investing in it. Uh, but WP Carey on the uh, single stock side of the house kind of rounds out this uh, aspect. And, and real estate's got a little favor here recently. Um, the only liquidation I will speak of in this account, which I've been waiting to do, unfortunately, came across a piece of news that I didn't have on Walgreens Boots Alliance. Um, I don't think that'll affect the stock insofar as it's kind of caught a little bit of fire here. Um, but I, I did want to trim my Staples uh, exposure. I already have exposure to CVS, which I'm a little bit more excited about anyway. And it's, it's more of a healthcare play, whereas Walgreens is uh, a little bit more uh, have, have a Staples kind of an angle to it. So I went ahead and took the liquidation there for profit. Um, so that, that helps solidify some cash there and, and lighten up on the staples sector. Um, and so starting at the top of this portfolio with technology, my very favorite, I'll, I'll run through here and cherry pick the, the technology aspects of this. Apple being the, the largest tech position here, really some nice exposure to tech in this portfolio. Apple uh, and IBM kind of round out the big tech aspect of it. But when you start to get into um, the strategic growth here, um, I'm going to talk about Facebook as a telecommunications name, which it is. Um, but CRM, which is Salesforce.com and CrowdStrike, those are two very unique plays, complementary. I Salesforce.com is the one stock that I think can double within the next five years. I, I think it's a hands down given. I think with even the conservative estimates, Salesforce has a lot to be excited about. Um, so that on more of the aggressive play, and you can see how I've kind of springboarded this position right into the Roth IRA with 15 shares, I used to own this in my aggressive growth portfolio when it was uh, when it was with M1 Finance, um, but that liquidation occurred, and then I reestablished that position because I it just speaks to how bullish I am on the name. CrowdStrike, on the other hand, with um, uh, anti piracy and doing their cybersecurity aspect of their business in the cloud, this position I bought. And actually, I took it into some deep water. It really went down quick when I bought it. And I was like, wow, lucky me. Um, I just held true on the name because I, I had researched this enough to put this in one of the top five stocks to buy for 2021 in uh, large cap growth. Um, nothing, no, no better company in uh, cybersecurity than CrowdStrike. And so we're going to own this long. And I, I think this could be a huge, huge win for me later on down the line. Very good, very well established. They are the best in their business at what they do. Um, I'm excited to own it within the portfolio here. That kind of rounds out technology and I'm, I'm super stoked on that. Now remember that the supplementary picks and technology are held in the dividend growth portfolio, but these larger positions are the ones that are aimed at getting me Sector, uh, sector exposure um, from, a, from a larger perspective, okay? So the telecom, Facebook rounds out kind of my growth. Those are good complementary plays to the ones I've just discussed. Um, Facebook is another one that I feel like the long-term growth, growth prospects are kind of off the charts. 
um, really insane. It's one of those companies that it's it's hard not to own. Um, I, I think it's probably one of the best value growth names out there. Phenomenal balance sheet, uh, making cash. They're, they're doing everything right. Uh, and if they can stay out of the limelight for data breach, uh, et cetera, things like that, I think the sky's the limit for Facebook. I think they'll do really well going forward. And just kind of combing through here, the oil aspect of this portfolio, which was really, really a drag. Um, I can't believe that it's, it's I'm going to say this, but I am going to say it with Royal Dutch Shell and Exxon Mobil, which round out my big oil. I, I took both of these into some deep, deep water, guys. And, and any school of thought could have justified taking losses on that. I did not. And I've held true. And it's turning out to be the right move really is some big positions here 111 positions in each of the big oil uh, super stoked on these names I'm, I'm, I'm excited even to look at these names uh, as down as they are they're really recovering nicely and I've I've invested through the base uh, in my opinion and and I do think that these have better times uh, ahead we'll continue to own them they're both huge dividend payers um, ExxonMobil specifically, I don't, Royal Dutch maybe took a, a reduction in their dividend. I can't remember specifically, uh, but still a company that I want to own. They're branching out into renewables. That's where I want to be, so I'm good to go. They, these, these positions are cornerstones. They're not going anywhere. They continue to pay the dividends, and they continue to organically grow on themselves. All right. Um, the, the, the loan discretionary name that I own in this uh, portfolio is McDonald's. That, again, is one of those stocks to buy and own forever. It does make my top 10. It doesn't necessarily make my top five, but it is in my top 10 of stocks to own, buy and own forever in the discretionary space. It's the only stock I have here uh, in discretionary, uh, which is fine. I'm, I'm glad to own McDonald's. I own a big position in it and, and given me an opportunity to take my speculative aspect of this, which is uh, reflective of what I have in the other one as well. I believe both of these are a mere uh, image of, of holdings in spec. Um, I might have a little bit more highly on maybe 100 more shares here, um, but we're up uh, $550 here in highly on um, with this nice base position that we've got. So we'll continue to allow that position to grow. Um, and then the idea down the line is that we leverage those profits into some of this, this value. Same thing with SoFi Capital. Um, so that SPAC, we need to get through merger and, and we need to get these warrants converted. But, uh, you know, we'll have a nice 400 share position after the dust settles there. So that's the speculative aspect of the portfolio. And finally, to round it out with the staples aspect, uh, we've got industrials as well. We'll do industrials first. Raytheon is the... Uh, the industrials play within this. It's it's one of my favorites. I'm monitoring it closely because right now I'm actually a touch over my strike price. So um, I do run the risk of having those shares called away. It'll be at a nice profit. Um, but I do need to um, downsize a little bit on my industrials exposure. So I'm okay with that happening. And what will happen is if I do that, I'll monitor the stock, try to initiate probably a quarter of this position back into the portfolio because Raytheon I really, really like a lot. Um, but if it gets called away, it's not going to be the worst thing in, in the world because, again, um, I'm, I'm extremely overweight industrials, which is a position that I don't normally like to be in. So we'll let that play out a little bit, and we'll monitor it, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. And finally, uh, the staples with Kimberly Clark and Coca-Cola. Um, these are companies that I'll own long forever. Not a big deal at all. They'll remain in here for the long term and, 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 and become generational wealth down the line. So with that, guys, that's the comprehensive look here at the portfolio. Um, if you notice the, the, the one bright spot there, um, I'll let you guys see if you can see that if you stayed with me for the totality of this review. Um, but I'm not going to comment on, on that uh, at this particular time. With that, we'll kick you back to YouTube. We'll conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the self-directed account here. This is uh, Roth IRA number two. You know, one thing that's uh, critical uh, to the success of this uh, account um, is the very decision that I made to start the account uh, some many years ago. Um, and in, in reflection, uh, if I had it to do over again, I would have started it sooner. And so for young investors that are hearing me out and they're diligent on trying to catch every word 
because I know there's some people out there that tune into my message and they turn right off because they're not looking for a long-term passive program, something that's been proven to work. They're looking for the next best thing. And mark my word, that landscape will dry up. It's a short-term, at best, philosophy in approaching stock market and wealth building. My program has been proven to work over time. There's no doubt about it. And it just makes sense from a discipline perspective. The idea is that you get this program right on the onset and let it start to work for you. That is the key. If you enjoy the message coming through, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with anybody out there that you know can benefit from the information I put through social media. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.